starting a new project in Trimble Business Center. Now, when you open up the program, you'll get this start page with basically this information. Now, you know, depending on, on when you when you open it, this information on the right here is going to be a, a little bit different um, based on updates and so forth from Trimble. And um, that doesn't really matter because over here is, is what we want. We can open an existing project, but here I'm going to start a new project. These are the default templates that come with Business Center uh, when you download uh, the program and install it. There are other templates that you can bring in. Um, you can make your own. You can adjust them. So there's a lot of flexibility here. I do know that I'm just going to do a U.S. Survey Foot project, and that's what I'm going to bring in and use that as, as the template for what I'm doing. So the business, business Center will open up. It's going to populate. Um, that, that uh, screen with the template information. And the first thing I want to do is get myself georeferenced. Now, um, I know I'm in US survey feet, but I want to make sure that I'm in the right coordinate zone. I want to get the state plane coordinate zone right. Now, this project happens to be in, in Lexington, South Carolina. So I know that that is um, uh, in, in South Carolina. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, you see it's picked here, South Carolina 3900. Um, and what I can do if that's not uh, currently in that group of uh, projects I've been working on, um, I can pick my coordinate system and zone and go to South Carolina 3900 and say next. And uh, it's going to ask me if I want a geoid model. In this case, I don't. We'll talk about that in the future um, if we want to use geoid models on projects or not. And then we're going to say finish and say OK. And now, I'm geo-referenced. In, in other words, this thing is, is set um, to South Carolina 3900, that, that coordinate system, and I want to import uh, a file next. I'm going to bring a CAD file in, and I want to geo-reference because 95 times out of 100, those CAD files that you get, especially simple 3D files, are going to be geo-referenced, so work in that geo-reference. Now, this is a bit of a parlor trick, but at least you'll know you're in the right neighborhood when you're working on these things. So there's not an issue when they go out to localize. So long gone to the days of that 5,000, 5,000 coordinate system we've seen forever. So I do have this CAD file on my desktop, and you may be uh, tempted to drag and drop, but I recommend against it for several reasons, and they uh, a lot of them appear right below here. First of all, we have file units. Now, CAD files, as a rule, are unitless. So you tell it what um, what information you want it brought in as. So if you ever have a problem when you brought a file in and it is completely wrong, uh, then you'll know what happened usually by this setting here. Um, I want to convert the blocks to 3D points. If I'm bringing in multiple files, you can sometimes prefix the whole file, the whole file's layer names by a prefix. So if I'm bringing three files, I'll say file one, file two, file three. That will let me know um, which ones I can I can work with. And uh, if there's phasing, that helps out also. A plot scale of 600 is fine. And ignore duplicate block names will say no because I want to see everything that's there and not just one out of the multiple block names that might be the same. So when there's an import, usually you'll get errors and warnings. So I oftentimes ignore these, but let's take a look today and uh, see what we have here. Um, we've got some 3D polylines that uh, that were set to null because of some validity issues, and two dimensions were not imported, not a big deal. And layer zero exists, but the importing layer's parameters may be different from the existing one. That's uh, sometimes a problem. Just be careful working with layer zero, and as we go along, you'll see why and how. So. I now have this project brought in, and I want to see if it's in the correct location. So what I'm going to do is um, there's like this toggle background image coming out. Let's say I kind of forget where it is. I, I don't know where it is, what's going on with it. Um, so what I can do is I can go here on my quick, um, uh, my quick select toolbar here. So I can, um, the quick access, I can move it above or below the, uh, the command line. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the command pane, and I'm going to start um, trying to find that command. And I know it has to do with like uh, uh, 
select background image or place background image or something, but I know background is in the command name. So um, I'm going to go here and start typing background, and it's called Taco Background Map. So I click on that, and when you do this, you need to have, um, you need to be logged into your Trimble account. So make sure you do that. Uh, you need an active uh, uh, Trimble account, which is not a big deal to get, and uh, that will make it so you can access these maps. Now, right now we see um, uh, kind of a, a, a map view, and what if I want to get the satellite view and take a look? So what I can do here to my project, um, I can click on the project and it brings up the properties. And I can turn, I can toggle the map on and off. And um, I can also change from map view to uh, satellite imagery. So I'm going to pull digital globe imagery. And you'll see this project is old enough that these houses have all been built. And I'm in pretty decent shape as far as um, my location is concerned, but but take a look at this. And this is why I, I deem this stuff mostly a parlor trick. Um, you'll see these houses are in, but this isn't really lined up or may not be lined up well uh, to the lot lines and things here. And if I go back to my map, you'll see the map view is a little bit better as far as its location is concerned. Um, and it's pretty close to the street there. The street's looking okay here. Again, we don't follow exactly what the street did. Um, and we come over here, and that cul-de-sac isn't too shabby, at least according to what this map shows. So you need to be careful with using this because it's going to get you close, but don't use it as, as the gospel to locate where you are. I can also set the transparency if I want to, and this might be good for... Um, quick presentation, information, uh, how close are we to the nearest, um, uh, you know, uh, gravel pit, uh, as far as hauling is concerned, if you're not sure, it's an area you haven't worked before. So these are all ways that you can kind of utilize map functions to sort of help you out some and, and, and give you a, a pretty decent um, idea of what and where you are. Uh, I do appreciate it. Any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks.